This is the 25th video in our series looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In this video, we're going to install and configure an application onto our NAS called Video Station. When we install Video Station, it will create a location on our NAS where we can store a library of video files. This library can then be accessed and shared over our home network via a web-based application. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the process for installing Video Station from within Package Center. Then after installing Video Station, we will review where Video Station will store our video library, along with configuring Video Station so that it can be used by the users of our home network. In order to install and configure Video Station, we first need to log into the Disk Station Manager using our administrator's credentials. From the DSM's desktop, if we now select Package Center, when Package Center opens, we are shown a screen that displays all of the packages that can be installed onto this model of Synology NAS. In order to find the Video Station package, we can use the provided filters. If we change the category filter from All Packages to Multimedia, Video Station will be listed as one of the multimedia packages that we can install. An alternative method for finding packages within Package Center is via the search bar. By typing Video and then pressing Enter on the keyboard, the Video Station package will once again be listed. Let's select Install and then take a look at the process for installing this package onto our NAS. First, we need to select which volume we wish to install Video Station onto. When we install the Video Station package onto a volume, the Video Station package will automatically create a shared folder, which will be used as a repository for our video library. As this new network share will be created on the same volume that we use for the installation of the Video Station package, we need to ensure that we're installing Video Station on a volume that has enough storage capacity for our library of video files. In this example, as Volume 2 was created specifically for multimedia files, it is the larger of the two volumes that we created in a previous video. It is for this reason that we will be installing Video Station onto Volume 2. The option, Always install new packages on this volume in the future, we will leave unticked as it will give us more flexibility as to where packages will be installed. After selecting Next, we need to double check our settings. You can see that Video Station will automatically run after it's installed onto our NAS, so let's select Apply. The Video Station package is now downloaded and then installed onto our NAS. Once Video Station has been installed, the Install button for Video Station will change to an Open button. As we now need to configure Video Station, let's close Package Center. First, we need to check the permissions for the video share that has been created by Video Station. If we open Control Panel, and then under the File Sharing section, locate and select Shared Folder. From within Shared Folder, we can see a list of all of the shares created on our NAS. From within this list, you can see a folder called Video, which was created on Volume 2. If we first highlight Video and then select the Edit button, we are presented with a series of tabs. Let's select the Permissions tab. As currently only the administrator's account has access to this video share, we need to adjust its access permissions. As we only want specific users of our NAS to be able to add videos to Video Station, we are going to adjust the permissions to the video share. If you remember back to a previous video, we created a number of user groups that were specifically designed to make assigning access permissions to network shares easier. So let's select Local Groups. Within Local Groups, 
you can see that only the administrators group has access to the video share. However, we also have a group called household management group. This group contains only the adult members of a fictitious family that we created for this video series. So in order to allow only the adult members of our fictitious family to have access to the files in Video Station's video library, we simply need to check the tick box in the read-write column of Household Management Group. When we select OK, the access permissions for Video Station's video share will be set. Next, from the sidebar, we need to locate and select the option Indexing Service. Within Media Indexing, we need to confirm that any files in the video share will automatically be scanned so that they are added to Video Station. We can do this by selecting Indexed Folder. From within Indexed Folder, we need to check that our video folder has been set so that any videos will be indexed. Indexing will use a database to record information about the files in our video folder which will in turn improve the speed that Video Station can find and play back the video files. When we installed Video Station, the installation process should have automatically set which folder is indexed for video. However, it's worth confirming that indexing service is correctly indexing specific file types within individual folders. Next, from the sidebar, we need to select Application Portal. You can see that under the Application tab, we have a list of the Synology applications we've installed. Next to Video Station, currently nothing has been assigned as an alias. An alias is useful as it will allow Video Station to load directly into a web browser, independently of DisStation Manager. So let's highlight Video Station and select the Edit button. Under the General tab, we need to set the option Enable Customized Alias. While we can use any alias we like, we will leave this alias set to its default of video. Login at tells us the web address to use if we wish to load the WebStation application into a web browser. When we select OK, Video Station is assigned its own alias. Once again, Using the sidebar and control panel, we need to select Privileges. While we have set the access privileges for the folder that Video Station will use as its video library, we have not set the access permissions to the Video Station application. This means that currently only the administrator's account has access to the Video Station application. As this NAS is being built for a fictitious family to use, we want everyone in this family to have access to Video Station. By selecting Group and then ticking the Allow checkbox next to the Family Group, we will ensure that the whole of our fictitious family has access to the Video Station application. When we select OK, Video Station's access privileges will be set. Finally, we need to open Video Station using our administrator's account. If we open Package Center and then from the sidebar select Installed, within Installed you will find the Video Station package. By selecting Open, Video Station will open in its own browser window. When Video Station loads, we are presented with a welcome screen that offers us a tutorial. Let's select Skip. You can see that we've logged into Video Station using our administrator's credentials. To the right, we have the Settings icon. When we select Settings, we're presented with a number of tabs. We need to select the Library tab and locate the Movie option. In order for Video Station to see the film stored in our movie share, we have to tell the Video Station application where our movies are stored on our NAS. When we select the folder icon, an add window will open. Next to the folder field, we need to choose select. We're now presented with all of the network shares that we've created on our NAS. Let's choose video and press the select button.
When we select OK, the Video Station application will now re index the video folder. Video Station has now been installed and configured, so let's select OK and close Video Station. As we have just seen one method for loading Video Station, let's take a look at the other methods that we can use. If from the DSM desktop, we select the main menu. Within main menu, you will see an icon for Video Station. If we now select Video Station, once again, the application will load in its own browser window. Let's close this browser tab and return to the DSM. The final method for accessing Video Station is via its alias. So let's log out of the Disk Station Manager. Now from the address bar of our browser, we need to enter the IP address of our NAS, followed by a forward slash and the word video. When we press enter on the keyboard, the Video Station login screen will load. We know that this is the Video Station login screen because of this icon. Let's sign into Video Station by using the account of one of the adults of our fictitious family. So to recap, in this video we installed and configured Video Station. This was done by first locating and then installing the Video Station package. With Video Station installed onto our NAS, we then had to set access permissions to the video file that was automatically created as part of the installation process. We then checked that index services were correctly configured, we assigned Video Station with an alias, and set the application's access privileges. We then had to configure the Video Station application so that it knows where our video files were stored on our NAS. Finally, we tested that we could log into Video Station using the login credentials for one of the adults in our fictitious family. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at installing and configuring Photo Station. Photo Station is the third of the three multimedia packages written by Synology that we will be installing onto our NAS.